Hey everyone, welcome to Instrumentation Lectures. In this video, we will be talking about transducers. So, we will learn about what is transducer, the need of transducer in measurement systems, followed by its classification and examples. So, let's start our lecture. We know that any measurement system consists of a number of components which work together to perform the measurement and produce the reading. In general, we have an input device, a signal processing device and an output device. The input device receives measurement or the signal to be measured. This signal is then processed by the signal processing unit and the output device displays the reading. Also, nowadays, most of the measurement systems are digital. This means that we need electrical quantities as the input, but most often the measurement is a non-electrical quantity. So, there is a need to convert this non-electrical quantity to an electrical quantity. And this task is done by a transducer, specifically speaking, an electrical transducer, because the output of the transducer will be electrical by nature. Now, this output of the transducer can be applied to other components of the measuring instrument. Okay. So, now comes the question, what is a transducer? A transducer is a device or combination of elements which respond to a physical condition or chemical state of a substance and develops an output functionally related to the magnitude of the stimulus. In other words, a transducer is a device that converts energy from one form to another form. Usually, it converts a signal in one form of energy to a signal in another. For example, optical energy to electrical energy or electrical signal to pressure variation etc. This definition of transducers also reminds us the need for transducers. Suppose our quantity to be measured is in one form and we need to convert it into some other form of energy for the purpose of measurement then we can use transducers. For this reason transducers are often employed at the boundaries of automation, measurement and control systems where Electrical signals are converted to and from other physical quantities. And this process of converting one form of energy to another is known as transduction. That is transduction. Okay. Now, going to the classification of transducers, there are mainly two types of transducers based on the nature of output. And they are mechanical transducers and electrical transducers. Transducers that convert physical quantities into mechanical quantities are known as mechanical transducers. Train gauge is an example of mechanical transducers. Similarly, transducers that convert physical quantities to electrical quantities are called electrical transducers. An example is a thermocouple that changes temperature differences into small voltages. Now, most often we use these two types of transducers in cascade to obtain the desired signal. For example, to measure pressure, we can use a board and tube, but the output of it is displacement. That is, when pressure is applied, the tip of the board and tube gets displaced by some amount. However, this displacement cannot be fed to a digital instrument. So, what we do is, using a pulley and string system, we transfer this displacement to the core of a LVDT. So, whenever there is displacement at the tip of board and tube, the amount of core inside the winding will be different and as a result, we get an output voltage as a function of the input pressure. And since this output is electrical in nature, it can be fed to a digital instrument. So, in this case, you can see that the sensing of physical quantity is done by this block. So, this element which is directly coupled to the system under study is known as the primary transducer. That is primary transducer or sensing element or detector element. Now, this second block, that is this block, which transforms the output of sensing element is called a transduction element, that is transduction element or secondary transducer. 
Okay, moving on to the next type of classification. Transducers can also be categorized based on the direction of flow of information. The first class is a sensor. A sensor is a transducer that receives and responds to a signal or a stimulus from a physical system. This sensor then produces a signal which represents the information about the system. An example of a sensor is a thermometer. Now coming to the second class, an actuator. An actuator is a device that is responsible for moving or controlling a mechanism or system. In other words, an actuator is a mechanism by which a control system acts upon an environment. An electric motor can be considered as an actuator as it converts electrical energy into mechanical energy. Lastly, we have bidirectional transducers. These are transducers that can convert physical phenomenon into electrical signals and also convert electrical signals to physical phenomena. An example is an antenna which can convert radio waves into electrical signals and can also translate an electrical signal from a transmitter to radio waves. Uh, now this sensor can again be categorized into two. That is passive sensors and active sensors. Passive sensors require an external power source to operate and this external power source is called an excitation signal. We need this external power source because we are actually measuring the power consumed by the sensor in the process of measurement. For example, consider the case of a thermistor. For those who don't know, a thermistor is a type of resistor whose resistance is dependent on temperature. So basically we can sense temperature by measuring its resistance. But for the measurement of resistance, we need to pass an electric current through it as the thermistor does not produce an electric signal on its own. Therefore, you can see that the thermistor depends on external source of electrical power for measurement. So, we classify it as a passive sensor. Active sensors on the other hand, generate an electric current in response to an external stimulus which serves as the output without needing an additional energy source. Such examples are photodiode, piezoelectric sensor, thermocouple, etc. Now we will learn another way to classify transducers which is based on their principle of operation. The first class is electrical transducers and these are again subdivided into many classes. The first one is electromechanical. Some examples of electromechanical transducers are strain gauge, galvanometer, generators and motors. Now the next subclass is electrochemical which includes battery, fuel cell, pH probe, etc. The next subclass is electroacoustic, electromagnetic or electrostatic transducers. Example for electroacoustic is loudspeaker. Example for electromagnetic is generator. And for electrostatic, an example is Van de Graaff generator. So, these are the three subclasses of electrical transducers. Now, the next class of transducer based on operation is mechanical transducers. Examples of mechanical transducers are barometer, gas flow meter, accelerometer, etc. Then we have thermal transducers. For example, a bimetallic strip which directly converts thermal energy into motion. Some other examples are thermometer, calorimeter, etc. Another class of transducers based on the principle of operation is the radiation type which include the photoelectric transducers. Examples are light bulb, photodiode, etc. Again, some other ways to classify transducers are based on the quantity they measure, whether they are analog or digital, or whether they are open loop or closed loop feedback transducers, etc. Since these classifications are self-explanatory, I am not discussing it further. Okay. Now there are two terminologies that comes under the topic of transducers which you should be familiar with. They are transmitters and transponders. Transmitters are transducers that convert the machine into a proportionate signal suitable for transmission over a pair of wires or by means of pneumatic lines. Meanwhile, transponders are transducers which automatically releases an output signal for transmission to a distant point when interrogated by another signal. An example is a RFID device which transmits a coded signal when it receives a request from a monitoring or control point. Okay.
Okay, now coming to our last topic, factors influencing the choice of transducers. Whenever we are choosing a transducer for a particular application, we have to consider a number of factors into account. Firstly, operating principle. One physical quantity can be measured by several types of transducers. We choose the one with operating principle which best suits our application. For example, if we want a high speed current sensor, we would choose a Hall of a transducer rather than an ordinary ammeter, right? Now the second factor is sensitivity. Obviously it is necessary for producing a correct and detectable output. So I don't think there is need for much explanation on that. The third factor is cross sensitivity. Cross sensitivity refers to the dependence of an output on an unintended stimulus. For example, a noise. Depending on the application, we may want to avoid this factor or exploit it. Moving on to the next, we have operating range. That is, the operating range of the transducer should match our needs. Next factor is errors and loading effect. Ideally, transducers should have high input impedance and low output impedance for avoiding loading effect. Nextly, the instrument should be able to work in any specific environments like high pressure, humidity or corrosive environments. Another factor is durability, size and weight of the transducers so that we can see if it fits our application. Also, stability of the transducer should be high enough for operation and should be reliable. Finally, the transducer should have high linearity, resolution, low hysteresis and should be free of temperature effects. So that brings us to the end of our lecture. To summarize, we learned what is a transducer and the need for transducers, how transducers are classified, and finally, the factors affecting the choice of transducers. If you have any doubt, feel free to ask in the comment sections. If you enjoyed the video, please do click the like button and also subscribe to the channel. From the next video onwards, we will be having a detailed discussion on transducers used for detecting different physical quantities. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.